Greetings, everyone. This is National Master Jonathan Hilton, and I'm the co-author of Wojo's Weapons, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. I am here today to answer a question that I've been getting from a number of club players, and it has to do with the closed Catalan system for black. Normally in the closed Catalan, you see black putting his bishop on e7, but particularly at the club level, it is very common for black to play something like c6, and then, for instance, on queen c2, to bring the bishop to d6. So the question is, how should white proceed against this? Is there a way for white to emerge with a slight edge? And there is, and in order to demonstrate it, I'd like to show you the game Alexander Vojkiewicz versus Vinay Bot. I have it saved as a bookmark, so I can just jump straight to it in chapter one of Wojo's Weapons, Winning with White. So this game was played in San Francisco, 1997, and at this period in time, Alexander Vojkiewicz was rated almost 2600. He was playing against Vinay Bot, who was at that point a master. And you'll see how easily white manages to get the upper hand in this game. So here we have it, bishop d6, trying to play a semi-slav with the black pieces. Both sides castle, and white puts his queen on c2. White is trying to play the e2 to e4 pawn break. Black, meanwhile has put his bishop on d6, hoping to break with pawn on e6 to e5. In the game, black plays rook to e8, which is the strongest move. Playing e5 immediately would give white an opportunity to gain the upper hand. White can simply play pawn takes, and then on pawn takes, here, white simply exchanges everything and emerges with a big edge thanks to how strong his play is against this isolated queen pawn on d5. The exchange of one pair of knights has really helped white here, and white's also really helped out by the fact that he has not yet played pawn on b2 to b3. This means that he can play rook to d1, and then on, say, rook to e8, white's able to play bishop to g5. The pressure really builds here. For instance, bishop e6, knight d4, bishop e5, takes, takes, and pawn to e4. At this point, white has massive pressure on the center. His rook on d1 is lined up with black's queen on d8. The knight on f6 is tied down. Um, and it's no surprise that in the one game where this has been tested, black quickly lost a pawn just like this, emerging down a pawn. So let's go ahead and return to the game. So instead of playing pawn to e5, allowing for white to get the upper, at, uh, the upper hand like this, black instead wisely chooses to play rook to e8. I should quickly just note that one alternative for black that I've actually seen in some of my own games on the immediate e5 break is that after white plays, pawn takes pawn on d5, sometimes, particularly very inexperienced players, will play knight takes d5 with black. The problem with this is that on knight c4, white just gains the bishop pair. The black pawn on e5 is attacked, and the black bishop on d6. After something like queen to e7, white just plays takes, takes, rook d1. At this point, white has a very active game, and black doesn't really have anything to show for his bishop pair. 
So if we jump back and look at the move rook to e8, we can see why this is attractive. It's a waiting move, and black is simply hoping that white will do something to make his position a little weaker before black breaks open the center with e6 to e5. And, in fact, white does. White plays b3, and if we compare this to the last line we looked at, in that line we saw the white bishop coming out to g5. The fact that white has now played b2 to b3 makes the e5 break somewhat more desirable. And in fact, e5 is what Vinay Bot plays in a game. Now, it would be possible for black to wait even more with queen to e7. This is probably actually even stronger than what black did play. For instance, bishop to b2, now black plays e5, white takes, black plays knight takes, and here there's a fork in the road. An older way for white to get a slight edge is to play pawn takes pawn, knight takes. Of course, black probably doesn't want to go into this because he is just taking on the Isolini on d5 without very much active play. Particularly here, white should be able to trade off some of the minor pieces and create good play against this pawn in short order. So, knight takes d5, and then knight to d4. This is a, a fairly powerful move, just centralizing the knight and then allowing the knight to come to f5. This threatens to win the bishop pair, so black has to keep moving, plays knight b4, or he plays queen b1, and at this point, white has essentially neutralized black's activity. For instance, uh, let's say black plays something like bishop to c5. We'll put on stockfish for a second. White can play a3. The knight goes back to d5. And white plays e3. So white has certain structural advantages here. The knight on d4 is well placed, uh, and the queen on b1 can support it as it, say, goes into f5. And meanwhile, white's also threatening to push b2 to b4, for instance, bishop d7, and, and then here white can play pawn to b4. And, well, if you look at stockfish, you can see a tendency to give white a slight edge. But in modern play, we have seen some players with white play the more ambitious knight to d4. And the idea with this is that after, say, takes, takes, knight takes, queen takes, and then bishop to e5, white can play some centralizing moves and then try to push on the king's side. This is a pawn sacrifice, and here, after queen takes e2, white can play bishop to f3, chasing the queen away, and then g4. White threatens g4 to g5, putting enormous pressure along the long dark squared diagonal. So the position is certainly playable for black, but most players would rather take white there seems to be very strong compensation for the pawn. At this point, I will return to the game. And black has played e5. So we were just looking at the waiting move queen e7. And we showed that this position has been a tried and true way for white to get a slight edge. But Vinay Bot plays pawn to e5 right away, not delaying the break any longer. White plays pawn takes, takes, giving black the isolated pawn, and now the simple move bishop to b2. At this point, 
you might recognize that this looks somewhat like a Tarish defense for black. Uh, but the problem for black is that he has wasted a few moves bringing this knight to e5. Black obviously doesn't want to allow the wholesale exchange of minor pieces, because minor piece trades into Tarish particularly favor white. White is simply going to bring a rook to d1, put pressure on the pawn on d5, and hopefully occupy the d4 square. And if black doesn't have sufficient activity, he is simply going to be ground out and will face a very unpleasant endgame. So, given that black doesn't want to exchange minor pieces, Anand, who once had this position with black, played the somewhat strange looking knight to c6, trying to retreat. Uh, at this point, though, white can get an edge simply by solidifying his control of d4, bringing his pieces to the center, and then here on bishop h5, threatening to bring the bishop back to g6, simply queen, queen to b1, bishop g6, queen to a1. At this point, white has really solidified his control of the center, and black has numerous problems on the long, the long dark squared diagonal. Black should understandably try to play for activity, but then at this point, white has the incredible defensive move, knight to e1. White simply threatening to play bishop takes f6, and the knight on e1 controls the c2 square, it controls the d3 square, so black really has no way to penetrate. For instance, bishop to e7, simply defending the knight on f6, runs into a3, knight c6, and then white came back and controlled the center. And this position results in a nice edge for white, for instance, a5, or fd1 because of the strong play against the pawn on d5. So, instead of Anand's knight to c6, we see in this game Vinay Bot playing bishop to g4, which looks a little more normal. However, Wojo quickly gained the upper hand. He played bishop takes e5, it probably doesn't matter so much. White could also have played knight takes e5. But as it happened in the game, Wojo played bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes, knight f3. And here there are a number of moves for black. Bishop takes f3. is what we see in the game. This, however, does just give white uh, a slight upper hand because the bishop take the bishop versus knight is very favorable given uh, how easily white is going to be able to attack the d5 pawn. There are a number of options here. Rook to h5 is one that is often seen at the club level because black wants to play bishop h3 and create a big attack. This doesn't turn out so well because there really is no attack here. White can simply centralize and um, this is just one example game. Rook c5. And at this point, white has a big edge. Bishop to f5 is a slightly more interesting try, but after queen d2, white has very good control of the dark squares, and particularly the d4 square. So... In this position, white can play bishop to h3, 
preserving the light squared bishops. Remember, white's light squared bishop is very good because it has the possibility of attacking the d5 pawn, whereas black's bishop, the light squared bishop, is a so-called problem child or bad bishop here. In the game Elvas versus Fernandez, white continued to dominate on the dark squares just like this. And at this point here, white is significantly better thanks to his control of the C file. For instance, he has the ability to penetrate with queen to C7. Um, meanwhile, although black has successfully developed his pieces, there really isn't any sort of mating attack. Uh, so black is bound to be disappointed here. The best try after Wojo's knight f3 is actually rook to e7. The idea here is that black is able to swing a rook over to the c file, and this will enable him to fight for control of the queen side. White can simply play knight d4, rook c8, queen b2, rook e to c7, and rook a c1. And in a number of games, black has managed to trade off all of the pieces and figure out some way to hold on to a draw. Nevertheless, this has to be pleasant for white because white is the only player here with winning chances. He has good control of the d4 square, which is key in these Isolini positions, and the bishop bears down on d5. So going back to the game, Binet bot understandably played bishop takes f3. But after takes, queen d7, rook a d1, rook c8, queen b2, controlling the dark squares, rook on c to e8, rook d4. Notice that since white doesn't have a knight to put on d4, he might as well put a rook on d4. Black plays queen to f5, and at this point, white comes up with a very strong idea. He plays queen to a3. This just tickles the pawn on a7 and allows white to surround black on the dark squares. Black defends. White creeps up, attacking the pawn on b7 again. Black defends it. White marches down the queen side with pawn to a4. And uh, at this point, Vinaybot plays h5, trying for some sort of attack. Of course, simply taking would have allowed white to retake with queen takes a4, creating pressure on the pawn on a6. So going back to this position, white plays takes, black plays rook b8. Of course, simply taking, if we turn on stop, stockfish, you can see that there's absolutely nothing wrong with white simply taking the pawn on b5. This has got to be a tremendous advantage for white. He just has an extra pawn. So, understandably, black plays rook to b8. However, this doesn't turn out very well for him either. White plays b6, rook e6, b7. Black is trying to chase this pawn, but... Uh, there really isn't any sort of compensation here. Queen c6, white takes control of the c file. Rook takes b7, queen d4. At this point, white has given that pawn back up, but has significant control over the board if you look at the placement of his queen and his rooks. Queen e8, rook takes a6, simply regaining the pawn, sort of the the natural outcome of white's activity. Queen e7, rook to b6, simply trading off and allowing the pawn on b3 to march down the board. And we can see what happened in the rest of the game in fairly short order. There isn't really anything spectacular going on for black here. It's just down a pawn, white fixes the king side, and now the pawn rolls down the board. Securing the king side a little more in the center. Winning another pawn. 
and soon Black will resign. Here, Black resigned. So this is a very good way for White to take advantage of the Black Bishop's place, placement on d6. Um, we've seen a number of thematic ideas. We've seen White exchanging in the center and putting a knight on c4. Uh, we've seen White give Black the isolated queen pawn and then occupy the d4 square and use his own queen to play on the dark squares. Although bishop d6 is certainly a playable line for Black, White shouldn't have many problems getting a slight edge against it. And I highly recommend for more information on this, you can take a look at my book, Wojo's Weapons, Winning with White, Volume 1. Thank you very much, and happy chess. Thank <laughs> you.